Hi there. I'm doing this video a bit differently. Hopefully my voice isn't too grating. Uh, there's always a mute button down below if you need it. I had a silly idea recently to try and bike on every street in my neighborhood in one ride. So my first question was, what is my neighborhood? Technically, I live in an area known as High Park North. The city of Toronto considers it a neighborhood. Google Maps also recognizes it as one. It's also about the right size to do a ride like this in about an hour or so. So I mapped out my route using a tool called Ride with GPS. It's pretty good for making routes and navigating them if you are a paying member. Instead of riding the length of every street, which would require a lot of doubling back, I decided just to ride on each street for at least a block. I also decided to skip unnamed alleyways and lanes. It can be pretty hard to find and they're not very well cleared in the winter. So I started out on one of the least bike friendly streets Dundas West. Right away, a car edged me out of my lane. Onto Bloor Street West. This is the southernmost street in High Park North. The recently built protected bike lanes have been cleared of snow, luckily, which makes riding here pretty easy. Dorval Road takes me back up over the Bloor subway line. The subway is actually above ground here, west of Dundas West Station. Glen Lake Avenue runs east-west through about the center of High Park North. I'd be coming back to this street a lot on this ride. Turning down this short side street, I have to deal with some wrong side parking. It seems to be a common habit during COVID times, probably due to all the deliveries. Quick zigzag to Edna Avenue. There's a community garden on the left here, running alongside the above ground subway. Indian Road takes me back uphill. I have to move over here for an impatient driver who's passing another wrong side parker. Wanda Avenue is known in normal times for hosting some really epic block parties. Back down the hill on Indian Road Crescent, I dodge right onto a one block street called Glen Gordon. Indian Grove crosses under the elevated subway line at Keel Station, takes me back to Bloor. After a short leg on Bloor, I head up Keel, one of the major north-south thoroughfares. Keel is a pretty poor street for biking on. It has no bike lanes and fast moving traffic. So I use the crosswalk to head west again on Glen Lake. Lithuania Park on the right is a popular tobogganing spot when we do get some snow. Back down to Bloor on Mount View Avenue, passing Keel Street Public School. You can see High Park across Bloor to the south. This area around High Park is full of high-rise apartment buildings, and there's several more under construction. Back down Pacific Avenue. Note the empty bike share station on the left. I'm not sure if the bikes are all being used or if they're in for winter servicing. An Uber driver backed up into my path here, but luckily I saw him ahead of time. Back on Bloor, I'm behind a bus turning up High Park Avenue, headed to High Park Subway Station. Signaling my left turn back at Glen Lake. Left on Quebec Avenue takes me to Gothic Avenue. pass by the former home of the High Park Sanitarium, which had a popular mineral bath pool that closed in the 1950s. Back out onto Quebec Avenue and another High Park subway entrance. Headed west on Bloor, where the snow clearance is not as good. People also use the bike lane for walking a lot in the social distancing age. This nub of a street dead ends at another entrance to High Park Station. Here I'm going under the tracks up Clendenin Avenue to the north. From here I take a loop on a side street called Oakview. That branches into Birchview Crescent. The slope up ahead is the subway embankment. I got a little distracted and almost wiped out on the snow ridge in the middle of the lane. 
Laura Road, like many city blocks, has one style of house along each side. Back on Clendenin, which is named for the first mayor of the Junction neighborhood, I'll put a link to some info on him in the description. West on Glendonwyn, I can't find much info about the street's history, but it appears to be a Scottish name that's also known as Glendenning, so it sounds suspiciously like Clendenin. I wonder if there is a connection. There are loads of schools in this area. This is actually a complex with Western Tech High School and several alternative schools. One of them, Ursula Franklin Academy, it's often used as a film location for its historic high school look. Norma is another short street I have to double back on. There are a couple of bungalows at the end, which is uh, really uncommon for houses around here. Down some streets I've never heard of or seen before, Kennedy Park, then Margden Road, just north of the subway line in the Bloor West Village area. The subway is underground here. Stretches above it have been made into linear park space. Glendonwyn leads back to Bloor for a bit. Then Kennedy Avenue runs past the eastern entrance to the Runnymede subway stop. Colbeck Street takes me to Runnymede Road, the western edge of High Park North. Runnymede has unprotected bike lanes, which makes it an okay street to ride on. Here we pass Runnymede School, one of the bigger local elementaries. Glenwood Avenue, not to be confused with Glen Lake. Here you can see the challenge of biking on a street with parking on both sides. I could have asserted my right of way, but it seems safer not to play chicken on the ice with an oncoming car. You zig up Runnymede to zag onto Webb Avenue. It was a little tricky to find some clear pavement here. And this is another street with a single style of housing. I like how every subdivided home on this side of the street tried something different with their upstairs cladding, just to kind of stand out. Last bit of Runnymede up to Annette, which is the northernmost street on this ride. Unfortunately, cars are less and less interested in obeying bike lanes these days. No wonder uh, when they're hardly cleared of snow. I thought I would just try this one short back lane as a connector. It wasn't very smooth riding. Back up to Annette and it's dodgy bike lanes. South one block to a short street called Jennings and another cluster of schools. I cut through Ravina Gardens, which is almost like a secret park since it's hidden from most of the major streets. This was the most snow I had to ride through today and my tires were not loving it. I have decent winter tires, but you really need a fat bike or uh, very wide mountain bike tires. I had to ride over to admire the murals. I think this is an older Muhammad Ali. Escaped the park and I took this short block back to Clendenin. I had to get back to Quebec Avenue just to access a little U-shaped street called Pinecrest Road. My ride with GPS app sent me the wrong way on Glen Lake. Uh, I think it just wanted to give me some extra hill work. <sighs> Back on track and up Quebec Avenue. This time I head east on Humberside. Back to Annette, which has a number of churches that are being turned into condos, the uh, true religion of Toronto being real estate after all. Quick tour of some side streets in the northern part of the neighborhood. First, Medlin Street, then Hillsview Avenue, 
and Mavity Street before returning to Humberside. After crossing Keel, I detoured up Indian Grove. I passed Baird Park, home to a lawn bowling club and one of the only fenced-in dog parks in the area. I spotted one of the only other cyclists on this ride before I headed south on Indian Road Crescent. This local school has the tiniest hockey rink I've ever seen. I finished my ride in the west part of the neighborhood with some quick blocks on Kenneth Avenue, Indian Road, and Jerome Street. I was running out of daylight as I took Dundas West south. Commuter trains run on the tracks over to the left, and you can see the pedestrian footbridge that crosses the tracks up ahead. Finally, the last street is Abbott Avenue, as the sun was just about to set. Overall, the ride was a bit shorter than I expected, just under 19 kilometers, though given all the twists and turns, I'm not surprised it took me a little over an hour. Thanks for riding with me. If you like this kind of content, uh, let me know in the comment section below. Like and subscribe if you want, ride safe, and ride often. Mm -hmm.